using the flipped classroom model is another way to reduce the amount of lecture time needed. In this model, the instructor records videos of their lectures or uses existing videos they find online and puts them online for students to watch as homework. They can be online in YouTube, the course learning management system, or another system. Then in class, Students work together on activities or questions that are based on the video lectures they watched for homework. The flipped classroom approach can be a part of any course. You can make your own videos in many ways. For example, you can record yourself speaking in front of your computer, or you can do a screencasting recording where you only record your screen, not yourself, and on your screen you have your slides or some examples. Some people use editing software, such as Camtasia or iMovie, but these are not necessary. You can also use a free tool, such as Adobe Spark, which allows you to record your voice over the top of the images. The images could be slides you made. The advantage to Adobe Spark is that it will store your video for you on their server, so you don't have to upload it anywhere, and you can just copy and share the link. The best types of class lessons to use for flipped learning are the ones where students need class time either to work on a project or to discuss material. For example, if you are doing a water cycle unit and your students are going to be giving a class presentation about how the water cycle works in your area, they will probably need class time to work on their project. You can therefore record yourself giving short lectures about the water cycle, and then during class, you don't have to lecture. You can just give them time to work on their project. If you are worried that students won't watch the videos for homework, you can give them a short graded quiz at the beginning of the class over the videos that they were supposed to watch. In this way, they will be sure to watch the videos since they know they will have the quiz. The flipped classroom model is also useful for larger classes, since structuring in-class interactive activities can be more challenging in larger classes. Of course, there are advantages to teaching large courses. More students means that you have more diversity in your class, in terms of students having different learning experiences, different viewpoints, different questions and ways of thinking about things, or different ways of learning. Engaging with diverse classmates and learning together can be very motivating for students. Many of the strategies mentioned earlier help keep students in large classes engaged. You may recall that these strategies include using word clouds for warm-up activities, using polling software to ask questions to students, and also allow students to ask you questions during lectures, or using small group discussions. Other strategies we have discussed in this course to help build interactivity can be used in large classes and can be found in Module 5, supporting students as they participate in class in English. You can review these strategies as you consider planning your own lessons. In addition, other things to try to build interactivity in large classes are to create a supportive environment, such as by using students' names, on name cards or a seating chart. Also ensuring that students can get sufficient feedback from their peers or from you as the instructor, and then moving around the room as much as possible when you lecture and also during group work time. After one or more in-class interactive activities, it is going to be time to regroup and summarize. This is where you will most likely use a slide or other visual to briefly outline the main points from the day's lessons. And you'll likely answer any final student questions before going over the homework for the next class. For example, for the water cycle lesson, you might put up the image of the water cycle back on the screen and go over the points that you covered in your class. For the main points, you can also list them on a slide and then be sure to allow time to answer any final student questions. The final component of your lesson plan that you will want to consider is formative assessments. You will want to think of what types of information you can gather from your students in order to plan future instruction 
and perhaps to give them a grade. You will also want to think of how to give them feedback. Options include feedback you give in a rubric or comments, peer review, or automatic feedback from an online quiz. With our water cycle example, you can use one of the interactive activities as a formative assessment measure. For example, we mentioned earlier that you can ask students to form groups and discuss the main water cycle concepts in a small group, focusing on critical thinking questions such as, if the second step of the water cycle, condensation, is missing in a certain ecosystem, what will the effect be on that ecosystem's environment? Or explain how the water cycle step of precipitation is directly related to the step of evaporation. If you collect students' answers, you can use them for a formative assessment. You don't need to assign a grade, but you can review their answers to see what percentage of the groups wrote the correct answer. If it is less than perhaps 60% of the class, you might want to review the topic in the next class session. For feedback, you have a few options. One is that you give or post the correct answers so that students can see them and compare the answers to their own. Another is that you could write feedback on students' papers and return the paper to the groups. Or you could meet with each group in the next class and discuss the feedback in person. For feedback, you can focus on the main ideas and on the keywords as well. The underlying idea with the formative assessment is that you can look at student work to determine how well they are meeting course student learning objectives and make any adjustments if necessary. You can review information from Module 6 about writing assessments before you complete this part of your lesson. Well, that is a lot of information about writing a lesson plan. That concludes our discussion about the steps of your lesson and how to make your class interactive and engaging for students.